Min Mario has proved itself to be one of the craziest challenges when you look at all the moons that have been proven possible. But what about all the moons that haven't been proven possible? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to cover in this third and final part to this series. And as always, if you haven't seen the previous two parts, I highly recommend watching those first so you have more context moving forward. Oh, and I couldn't help but notice that the button down there is still red. I just thought I'd point it out for you. Anyways, before we get started going over the impossible Min Mario moons, one more moon has actually been proven since the last video. Relaxmus discovered a genius way of actually getting the cage moon. To start, you first need to get the Invincibro on top of the cage. However, we can't use the usual wall climbing method because we'll just get stopped by the underside of the cage. So to get him on top, you actually need to perfectly bounce on him repeatedly in midair without messing up. Now, this is incredibly difficult. So Relaxmus used a tool to slow down time to make this easier, but it still took him four hours to get to the top. After this, you now need to nut jump to the top of the cage. Now just capture the Invincibro as you throw the nut into him, and this will actually cause him to clip through, making this moon possible. However, both this clip and nut jumping have been patched out of 1.3. So as of right now, this moon is only possible in 1.0. But on the bright side, we do have a working theory for how to get this moon in 1.0. Three, but more on that later. For now, let's just get started going over all of the impossible Min Mario moons. The first moon I want to go over is this multi moon. Now, in the previous video, I explained how this moon was possible in 1.0, but not 1.3 because of the patched out chain chomp displacement glitch. Now, I also mentioned how I discovered a new glitch in 1.3 that allows you to move the chain chomp just about anywhere just by holding a single direction. So, why doesn't this make the multi moon possible in 1.3? Well, as it turns out, this glitch only works as long as you're not going uphill. So bringing the chomp straight down the middle of the bridge is a no-go since there's an incline we just can't move up. But you would think that moving along the sides of the bridge would work since it's not as steep. But the jagged rocks actually get in our way on both sides which prevents us from going any further. Getting this moon seems hopeless but we actually do have a working theory for how to get it. You see I haven't entirely been honest with you about something. When chain chomp displacement got patched out there were multiple instances where people accidentally got the glitch on 1.3, but no one ever knew how they did it. But when trying to prove this moon, I studied these few instances and was actually able to recreate it. And with the help of Relaxmus, we think we figured out how it works. To make a long story short, if you kill a chomp with the T-Rex and the corpse of that chomp flies into another chomp as it disappears, its dead body will then be pushed in a random direction by the chomp that's still alive. And while invisible, it'll start hovering in the direction it was pushed in, starting from its original position. And then, once it's a certain distance away from Mario, it'll become visible again and stay in its place. Now, to better understand what's happening, Pants actually modded the game to make Chain Chomps visible while they're dead. So, you can see how the Chomps slowly hover away until eventually they're far enough away from Mario and pop back in place. We've decided to distinguish this glitch from CCD and call it DCCD since it requires a completely different process to do. So, with all that being said, how could this even help us get the multi moon? Well, when you're in the fight, every chain chomp is despawned except for the top two. So, in theory, we could use CCO to bring both chomps down to the lower part of the kingdom and find a setup to do DCCD to kill one of the chomps inside of the other, which will then hopefully cause that chomp to go inside of the arena. This is an insane theory that would be very hard to pull off, but if it's ever proven, it would save three more Mario moons in 1.3. The next moon I want to cover is this island moon, and our current theory for this one is probably the craziest out of them all, because our best theory for how to get this moon is to get it with the golden chain chomp. Yeah, yeah, I know, but just hear me out. In 1.0, we can start the fight without collecting the first power moon. And if we can escape the arena and collect the first moon during the fight, the barriers will actually disappear. And with the barriers gone, Madam Brood can just simply walk out of the arena. But how would we ever get them on the island? Well, if Madam Brood falls off a ledge and the chomp is stuck on that same ledge, whenever Madam Brood tugs on the chain, she inadvertently launches both of them into the sky. Using this, maybe one one day we could launch them both on the island from this ledge and capture the chomp to get the moon. Now this next theory wouldn't just prove one moon, but it would prove five. And those five moons would take the Mario moon count in Sand Kingdom down to one in all versions of the game. 
The Moai capture is normally secluded on this island with no way to get to the mainland, but there actually is a way to get them across this void, but it's not an easy task. The process for escaping the Moai is very complicated, so I'll leave a link in the description to a video that'll give an actual in-depth explanation of it, but essentially, by moving these platforms over and over again, and briefly loading the Moai to ever so slightly raise it on each pass, you can eventually get it to the top of the vertical section. And for the horizontal sections, by getting the Moai to run away from you a little bit on each pass, you can very slowly get it across these sections as well and all the way to the mainland. But if we know this is possible, then why am I mentioning this in the theory video? Well, even though we know it's possible, no one has ever done it pre-peace and without using mods. The video I linked was a proof of concept video where he used mods to bring the Moai back up to retry each section. And in that video, he does the escape post-peace and uses a pylon that we don't have access to pre-peace. So we would also need to use a completely different method to do this in this run. Many people have tried to prove this, but everyone has failed. But I have no doubt that this will be proven one day, and you could be the one to do it. Moving on to Wooded Kingdom, there's only one moon we currently have a theory for, of course being the cage moon for 1.3. Now, there's only one way in and one way out of the cage, and it's these platforms. And when you step on these platforms, they respawn almost immediately closing the gap. So how could we ever bring a capture in the cage fast enough? Well, our best theory so far is actually with the uproot. There's a glitch in this game where if you catch a rock as it falls off a falling platform, it becomes invulnerable and begins to float. And if we use a bunch of these, we can actually make a path for the uproot to get on top of the cage. And once the uproot is on top, if we could find a way to clip Mario inside of the cage, we think there would be enough time to lower the platforms, capture the uproot, fall down on a floating rock and get inside the cage with the uproot. But as you can see, the biggest obstacle right now is clipping Mario in the cage. Now we have two working theories for how to do this, but neither would be easy. The first is that we could set up a hover bro and attempt to damage clip on the side of the cage, which is where Mario gets hit during an animation where he's briefly in a wall. But this would be brutally hard. The other is that we could just simply try to ledge clip which is a very precise dive where Mario can just clip through the collision on a corner. Now, this theory obviously seems way more attainable, but it would still be insanely difficult, and we're still not entirely sure it's even possible to do on the cage. But if either of these methods of clipping in the cage works, it would make this possible and add one more moon to the counter. Next up is the multi-moon in Lake Kingdom, and the frustrating part about this moon is that we know it's possible. We currently have two working theories for how to get this moon, and the first of which is really cool but would be very difficult to pull off. Now, like with every multi-moon, the first problem is obviously escaping the arena. However, this can be done with an OCRC. This is similar to a regular CRC, but this one teleports Cappy straight to the Odyssey. And you can pull this off by first setting up globe storage, which essentially just leaves Cappy on the globe. After that, you can just start the fight and spam the Y button to have Cappy teleport back over to the Odyssey. However, this is way easier said than done. This trick is quite literally frame perfect. You have to hit the Y button on the very first frame of the fight for it to work. If you mistime it, you have to redo everything again. But with enough trial and error, you can eventually get Cappy to teleport and escape the arena once Cappy hits the globe. So now that we're out of the arena, what's next? Well, as it turns out, once you escape the arena, Rango starts throwing his hats outside the boundary of the arena. So in theory, we could bounce off the hats all the way back to the arena as they retract, but unfortunately, they seem to be too high to reach with any captures. Luckily, however, there is a way to lower the hats. This can be done if the hats fly into the downward slopes on the walls, and once that's done, they might actually be low enough to reach with a Goomba. But assuming we can even get a Goomba to bounce off the hat, there's still one last major problem. The hat doesn't fly back towards the arena as you jump on it, so how would this even help us? Well, one unique thing about Goomba stacks is that you can unload them mid-air and they'll stay in place. So once again, in theory, we could bounce off
off the hat, then unload the Goomba stack midair to allow the hat to retract. Once Rango throws the hat again, we could hit the hat, but this time a little closer to the arena. After that, just recapture the Goombas to bounce off it again and repeat the process. This would allow us to slowly inch ourselves all the way to the arena and eventually get the moon. Now, as ridiculous as that theory sounds, it's still way more likely to happen than this next one. But the funny thing is, this next one is 100% possible in theory, but would be extremely unlikely to happen. You see, there's an infamous glitch in this game called Air Swim. When this glitch occurs, for some reason, all the water in the kingdom extends beyond where it normally is. In 1.0, the water goes all the way to the top of the kingdom, and in 1.3, it goes only slightly higher than normal. This glitch alone would prove multiple moons around the kingdom in 1.0, since you could just use the fish to swim directly to them. But in order for this glitch to prove the multi-moon, it gets much more complicated. Even if we were able to bring a capture in the arena with Air Swim, as soon as the fight starts, it would just despawn. Therefore, we would need to somehow bring the capture in the arena after the moon has already spawned. Now, just simply doing an OCRC would allow us to escape, but the moon wouldn't be spawned. And if we spawn the moon while escaped, we're just teleported back in. So to prevent this, after doing the first OCRC to escape, we need to set up another OCRC and successfully pull it off on the first frame after the moon spawns in order to escape a second time. After that, we could just use Air Swim to get the fish in the arena and get the moon. So just to recap, for this moon to be proven, we would either need to do ultra precise Goomba platforming that may or may not even be possible or be extremely lucky and get the once in a lifetime rarest glitch in the game and then successfully pull off two back to back frame perfect tricks first try. This is getting out of hand. The next moon I'm going to cover is Dizzying Heights. This moon, along with a few others, are also 100% possible, but would be extremely difficult to get. But I actually almost did get this one. The reason I was never able to prove this moon with letter hyperspeed was simply because it just didn't give enough height. However, there were a few clips of people randomly getting extremely high with hyperspeed. But getting this height was seemingly random, and no one was ever able to intentionally replicate it. That is, until I started messing around with it. There was one clip in particular that caught my eye. In this clip, the vertical launch was entirely on screen and it seemed as though you just had to walk out of the taxi at the right angle. So, I spent hours and hours just walking out of this taxi hoping to get a vertical launch. Until eventually, I did. I looked back at the clip of me getting it and this was the angle the letter was right before I walked out of the taxi. And by using this image as a reference, I've been able to replicate the vertical launch multiple times. So if anyone wants to try Try this for themselves, I highly recommend using this image to help. But getting the vertical launch is just the start. Now we actually have to get the moon. But as it turns out, if you uncapture a letter midair after getting a vertical launch, it just stays in place midair rather than falling. And then after recapturing it, it falls straight down at an insanely fast speed that causes it to clip through any and all collision. So unfortunately, that means we can't just recapture the letter and have it land on the building from above. In order to get this moon, we would need to uncapture the letter directly above the moon after getting the vertical launch. Then when we recapture, we would fall straight into the moon. And like I said, I did get extremely close, but was never able to actually get it. So if anyone wants to prove more moons, this is definitely the one to go for. The next one is the Painting Island and Snow Kingdom. And I genuinely feel like this may only be possible with Tass. I attempted to get this moon for hours, but I never really got close. Our only theory to get this moon is with the fish. If you jump with a fish on the ice walls, you can build up speed very quickly. And this would prove the moon if there wasn't a time limit for how long the fish can live outside the water. So because of this, in order to get the moon, you would need to take the perfect line to get there as fast as possible before the timer kills the fish, which like I said, may only be possible with Tess. I think it's also quickly worth mentioning this moon. There's not really any theory for how to get this moon, but we can get super close to it. I I just feel like there must be some way to clip the blowy joey through this wall. So I figured I'd mention it just in case anyone wants to actually mess around with it and maybe find a way to clip through. Now, there's one final moon left to talk about, and fittingly, it's in Mushroom Kingdom. And once again, we're talking about the Painting Island. I feel like this moon is one of the ones that's more likely to be proven because we have a strategy and it's successfully been done by a human before. If you ride a scooter and then capture Yoshi as you pass him, as long as you keep 
keep hitting the scooter in some way, it'll keep its momentum. And as you can see, this has successfully been done before. So if we could just replicate that clip, but this time hop on the scooter towards the island, we should theoretically be able to flutter onto the island with Yoshi to get the moon. I attempted to do this for a while, but was never able to get anywhere close. But I do believe it can be done. Now, with that final moon out of the way, this series is just about wrapped up. I do plan on making another video if and when there's any major updates to the category, because as you can see, we are constantly working on new theories. But besides that, this is it. I've had a ton of fun on this project, and I'm still so grateful for all the support on this series. This was by far the biggest project I've worked on, and quite frankly, the only videos I actually put a ton of effort into. And once again, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed. I can't wait to see you in the next video, but until then, see ya!